four developers will go head to head for three days making a game using the same theme. On day two, each developer will give someone else a request that must be put in that game whether they like it or not. And at the end of the video, make sure to comment which game you think won to help decide who wins the ultimate prize. A never seen before picture from the stud Glibbert himself. Now, I think it's about time we start this challenge, but before, make sure to wishlist my game on Steam, a multiplayer FPS with destruction physics. Each of us suggested a theme, and the only fair choice would be to randomly pick it. And there we go, the theme is Honey. So now that we have our theme, it's time for each of us to develop our game in 3 days. Timer starting now. Alright, so I just got the theme, and it's Honey. I think I want to make some type of like FPS bow and arrow game, similar to the Horizon of the Dawn. Some mecha animals and the goal of the game would be to simply just survive and hunt down mechas. So to start I need an FPS controller and a bow and arrow. Since I got the player controller and bow slightly working now, I think I should focus on making the bow actually shoot arrows. All I did was add force towards the crosshair and let Unity Physics handle the rest. And of course added some particles when the arrow hits an object. Now with the main mechanics done, I should start working on the deer AI, and the best place to start for a game gem would be Sketchfab. So I simply found the model that was animated, put it in Blender, and decimated it so it would look low poly. Little tip for you non-modelers. When I do have time, I'll work on making it look like a mecha, but for now the basic mesh will work. The AI for the deer is very simple, just patrolling, random spots to idle, and run away when the player is near. Uh, I don't think he's supposed to hang like that. But since the rig is non-humanoid, I have to make the ragdoll from scratch, which would be nice when the deer is shot dead. So my idea is to take the theme of hunting and invert it. Instead of you being the hunter, you become the prey. <laughs> Very original idea, I know. Anyway, here's how I want the game to work. You play as Guy in a chair, who's being hunted by a tall, scary Caucasian man. Anyway, the main mechanic of the game is going to be like this walkie-talkie microwave-looking thing that allows you to hear noises from microphones set up around the map. You can then switch the channels to check each room for abnormal noises. Once you narrow down which room they're in, you can use the map to see where they're coming at you from. If the tall Caucasian man isn't in any of the rooms, then that means he's coming for you. The first thing I did was hop into the blender and start modeling the necessary props. I started with the swaggy desk and then I added funny microwave walkie-talkie thing and a monitor so that you can see the audio. Because I'm a considerable guy, I want the game to be accessible to deaf people. I then proceeded to throw a bunch of stuff onto the desk to make it seem less empty, including this uncomfortable mug so that I could maximize the player's uneasiness. Once all of that was done, I started working on the movement and controls. So we've got something that's pretty smooth, you can look in all four directions and stuff, and uh, you can click things and do stuff, uh, generally just pretty cool. First things first, I tackle the movement aspect. I thought it'd be awesome to play as a cat on a rat hunting rampage. So I made sure the player controller felt super fast and smooth. And why not give the cat a gun? I wanted to go for a cool retro vibe, something like Conqueror's Bad Fur Day on the N64. I say, I say, little fella, you better get this fat ass bitch off of my back pronto. At this point, I had a basic AI up and running, so I decided to work on some gun effects. I also started modeling the enemy rat, and I think it turned out pretty decent. The rest of the art will have to come later. So I decided to go with the classic hunting game where you're going to be hunting animals. And I was already behind the other guys because I started in the evening after work. And day three, I actually had to fly out. So yeah, I had to get to work quickly. I started off by working on the player movement and then spent some time modeling a spear as a weapon for the player. It was looking pretty static, so I did some sway to the spear when looking around. Next, I used Unity's train system to design the train for my game. And it was taking place in a forest, so I painted trees and bushes on it. So for the attack, I first worked on just being able to poke the spear, which would do less damage and then made the ability to throw the spear where the player would have limited quantity amount but it would do more damage to the animal. I made a spear counter for the number of throwable spears and added in the first animal which was a fox and animated it to run around and it was getting pretty late so I picked up the rest of the work on day two. So I woke up today choosing violence. I decided to delete my progress and only keep the FPS controller. I think I want to take this hunting theme less generic and be more horror style with the monster trying to hunt you instead. So let's start with level design to get this out the way. Quickly I'm going to block out a basic hallway to kind of see the mood of the game and make sure that it's right before I continue. 
For the map, I kinda had in mind an abandoned asylum, with multiple rooms where patients slept and a couple hallways that connected to each other. The only way to get out of the asylum would be through escaping, maybe some items you could collect to get the power on, and some hiding spots just in case you were being chased. Now I just received the challenge from Gilbert, which said add a cat in the game, so I did just that. I needed a creature either way, so let's make the cat the scary monster that we needed. I modeled most of the environment, but I did use some models from Sketchfab since I didn't really have a lot of time. I wanted to make this as creepy as possible with flickering lights and creepy noises as you go through the level. <laughs> Lastly for day 2, I added hiding spots so if you are being chased, you can quickly hide from the cat. So day two was mostly programming. The first thing I did was start work on the funny microwave. I made it so that switching channels actually did stuff. I also made this sick, dope, awesome, swag, sexy, super eloquent, very cool, not scary, unterrorist, completely safe, not confusing, Dicky Mahuba that revolutionized the industry of using your ears. Now since it's day two, this means that today I get my wild card. Oh, I can have fun with this. I mean, here's a weird sound for you right now. I hopped into Audacity and started messing around. Perfect. Secondly, what I did is set up some peripheral systems just to make the game significantly more stressful. The first of these systems was power. Whenever you turn on a light or shock something, it consumes power. Once you run out of power, you have to wait a while for it to come back. So you can't shock things, you can't check the microwave for noises. All that's left to do is pray. The second of these systems was the insanity system. The longer you're in the game, the higher your insanity goes. The more insane you get, the more insane you get. What I mean is that with each increasing level of insanity, you start to perceive things that aren't there, see things that aren't real. Once you get to the third and final level of insanity, you have a couple seconds before you die. If you hold spacebar, you can lie your head on the desk and sleep. When asleep, your insanity goes back down. Also, sleeping, there's a little melody that plays, making it hard to hear your surroundings. Overall, being asleep also makes you extremely vulnerable. After cleaning this up, I went to sleep. On day two, my focus shifted towards art and getting the game's core functionalities in place. I started off by designing the player's arms, which were just two long tubes. Then I dove into the guns. I'm no expert in this style, so I was just kind of winging it, but what do you think? I think they turned out really cool and I'm especially happy with how the Mac 10 came out. Just when I was getting into it, Carbon threw a challenge my way. Add hacking to the game. I brainstormed a few ideas, but I was still fixated on perfecting my arsenal, so I decided to save the hacking stuff for later. I managed to finish weapon pickups as well, so now I can start working on the game's progression. I wanted to give my mind a break from all the coding and animating, so I worked on some art for the game. So on day 2, I really didn't have much time and I had to cram everything remaining as I literally had a flight to catch the next day. So after work, I got to work where I added a moose, a wolf, and made an animal spawner to spawn them across the terrain. I added more elements to the UI such as cache, health, and score. Of course, the animals needed sound, so I recorded them using my voice and what can you say, I'm an expert. Mm -mm. I also just stole Minecraft animals damage idea where the animals flash red on damage because that's all I could think of. So I implemented that so now it happens when I attack them. I gave the animals the ability to chase the player and decrease the player's health on taking damage and of course Ow. play this beautiful sound. Ow. Then I got hit with Alex's request and this guy said to incorporate a way for the player to shrink. And that was totally what this survival game needed. So I implemented it and so now when the player takes damage the player slightly shrinks and so Ow. it kinda ended up being funny where at a certain point the grass is literally taller than you. Next I worked on the shop where the player would be able to purchase upgrades such as increased damage, increased health and the ability to grow back in height. Final day now and I still have some things to do. To start I need to create the game loop or at least fake it. So I started creating an elevator which gets powered on when finding the items. There would be two items. The first one would be some type of circuit from a circuit board. I don't know, I'm not really an electrician. Next would be a key which would open the door where the circuit would be hidden. Now since I don't have time for a story real ending, I'm just going to make the elevator fall and crash and tell you there's no way out. It needs to be slightly creepy and have a really cool animation when falling.
Next, I had to make the AI do the AI thingy, where it follows the player and tries to catch him, and if it does, it'll have a cool jump scare. Lastly, I had to make a main menu and an intro to the game, which I did so with very bad acting. Day 3 was probably the most jam-packed day of all, so I'm gonna try to keep this one short. First thing I did was make monsters. I had originally concepted these things, but then decided that they were too cute and discarded them. So I just replaced it with this tall Caucasian man with a hole for a face. There's no reference there. Next, I made a simple animation for the jump scare and added some sound effects, camera shake, and flashing lights to make it more epilepsy inducing. Now that there's a way to lose, we need to make a way to win the game. Now this game wouldn't be a FNAF clone if you didn't win the game by surviving until 6am. Psych! I'm original, so it's actually 4am. Yeah, I know. I'm amazing. Now we have ways you can both lose and win the game. So the game was basically done now, and I only had about 3 hours left, but I felt like it was still too shallow. So I did what any normal person would do in a situation like this. I created an entire story and cutscenes for it, made a tutorial based off that story, Hey, is this thing on? Changed the whole ending based on the story, added 3 different difficulties, made a very 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 cool main menu, added lots of polish, a pause menu, and fixed tons of bugs, and lastly, made an itch page. Yeah, I know, amazingly, after I finished all that, I still had a couple minutes left, so I set up a swag itch page for the game, and once that was done, my time was up. On day 3, I kicked off by focusing on the map design. I created a sprawling sewer system that might seem a tad overscaled to the player, but overall, I'm satisfied with how it turned out. Additionally, I dedicated some time to crafting a player guide that adds depth to the story and provides helpful tips along the way. I was also able to put a small amount of time to work on the main menu, which I think came out okay. I went through the entire game, fine tuning it and adding small details that could help sell the environment. To ensure a balanced gameplay experience, I introduced health pickups, which proved to be a crucial addition. Finally, I tackled the hacking challenge from day 2. Admittedly, I didn't delve too deep into it, but it still added a cool interactive element to the game that I felt worked pretty good. And then I just finally uploaded the game to itch.io. Thank you to Alex for inviting me to this challenge. So on day 3, I made the most basic main menu and then I was off to the airport. And so while Carbon, Alex, Gilbert were working hard, I flew out to Florida and was enjoying the weather. All I could do was hope that somehow the judge would like my scuffed game. So it's been over 3 days since we each started our games. All that's left is to publish the games on itch.io for you guys to play. Make sure to let us know who you think deserves the win. Alright, I have decided that Asylum? Asylum. All right. I am a torch. I do not care. Oh shit! Uh, all right. So let's try this one. If I hear the rattling hide, how do I hide? Br Shitter! Rodan's Retribution. Oh yeah, now we have a weapon, so I, I can fight somehow. Huh? Alright. Oh shit. Shitty decision. Oh man. Can shoot right. Oh yeah. Yeah! Spear hunt. Like these models a little bit. What is this audio? I don't know how to feel about this. I'm a bean. <laughs> Why? There is the shop on top of my screen. Hello everybody, it's Dubsker, and today I'm going to be reviewing four games made from this challenge. Whoa, my cat some cool atmosphere this this is so I'm, I don't want to go back to the beginning. I'm not playing this all right now on to Usman Dev's game 
I feel like the grass shouldn't move like that in the water. I mean, something's weird. Yeah. Is that an animal? Oh my god. Wait, I only have a certain amount of spears. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <gasps> no, I fell off the... Now for the silent asylum. Ooh. Where am I? Cutscene? Where am I? <laughs> here. Ooh. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Well, I hid from him. Awesome! Did I win? This elevator does not sound very safe, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Okay, this is Carbon's game, Children of the Eyes. That means- oh my god, he, he instantly went for me, man. Okay. Ooh, get zapped, bozo. Wake up. Oh. Hello, my name is Twest, and I will be judging these four games. First up is Gilbert's Game. It's a really funny game with some cool gameplay mechanics, but it's also very annoying to play because you respawn at the start of the game every single time you die. Next up is Alex's Game. It's got some pretty good ambience, and it was also able to scare me. However, the coolest part of the game is the ending, where you fall down the elevator. Now for Carbon's Game, which is actually able to scare me pretty well. I think I know what game inspired it, but also adds a ton to the idea. For example, sleeping, which was definitely the scariest part. Last but not least, Osmond's game. It's pretty colorful and funny, but also lacked a lot of features and was kind of boring after playing for a little bit.